at Anderson United Methodist Church. I'm glad you're here. It's another wonderful day to gather together. Amen? Good to be here. All right. I see some folks out there with energy. How'd you manage to keep all that energy? With Case running around in, in your house. Their house is tiny. Oh, well, that's true. That's true. It's a tiny house. Does that make it easier or harder to, to parent? That's true. That's true. It's it's your house. Yeah. He likes the steps. He likes the steps. How about back there? I see a palm leaf waving around. Who's excited that it's spring and we're finally getting a little bit of spring? Off and on. Is it supposed to snow this week? Oh, wow. Thank you, Missouri. Keeps us on our toes, though, doesn't it? It's always something new around the corner. Sometimes it's warm, sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's rainy. But it's always surprising. It's always new. And, uh, and we give thanks for the way that God keeps us on our toes. And the way that God goes through all of those different changes with us. And again, we see God, though it might be different outside, it might be different in our own lives. Once again, it's Sunday. And once again, we are together in the presence of God's Spirit. Opening our hearts and our minds to, to new understanding and to that renewal that comes with, with being in God's presence. That sustaining grace of God in the midst of all times. And so I invite you to join with me in a moment of prayer as we give thanks, as we invite God into this worship. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this people of faith. For brothers and sisters, all by the power of your Spirit. God, thank you for the gift of the resurrection that brings us to new life, that brings a monumental change in our lives and the lives of those around us. Allow us to experience that wonderful newness today. Help us to be transformed that we might share it with others. Bless us this day and every day and perfect our worship that we may glorify you with all that we are. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And now I'm, I'm, we're switching it up just a little bit for our opening hymn. Instead of 315, it's 314. We're going to be singing In the Garden, and we're going to be singing three verses, which will be all of, all of the three verses. Please stand as you are able. I come to the garden alone Where the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God discloses and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tell me that none other has ever known I'd stay Oh, no. 
night around me be falling, but he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the we share as we tarry there none other has ever known You may be seated. Now I'd like to share with you a reading from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? Though, as though by our own power or piety, we made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, as glorified, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name itself is, has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith is through Jesus. And this faith through Jesus has given him a perfect health in the presence of all of you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now I saw that it's Sue's birthday today, and so we give thanks for that. Uh, are there any other birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate or days of note to celebrate today? Tuesday will be 30 years. $30. Marcy was just going to put in one for each half a year, but I thought $2 was pretty cheap. <laughs> and this was about the temperature and everything. <laughs> That's awesome. 30 years on Tuesday. Ready? Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you and many more. We give thanks for that because every year is a blessing not only to you and to your family, but to all of us. And we give thanks to God for that. Well, as far as announcements go, I direct your attention to the back of the bulletin. We have our uh, ongoing ministries, our Bible studies, our Sunday schools. Uh, for those of you online, we do have an online Sunday school uh, Bible study that you are certainly invited to be a part of. Uh, just reach out to me for an invitation for that. It's on Tuesdays at 5 o'clock. And uh, are there any other announcements, anything else we'd like to bring to the... Men. Meeting Wednesday night. Payment all over. So the, men, the men's meeting for the church are meeting Wednesday night, and I missed the second part. At Kenny's. At Kenny's. Oh, Kenny. So, uh, so uh, all men are invited, and it'll be a good time to share a little bit of scripture and a little bit of socialization and company. And so uh, uh, we extend that invitation out and give thanks for that ministry. Friday night. Friday night is our play. Um, 
Friday night at 7 or Saturday at 2 at the high school at center. So again, especially for the... For the folks online too, there's going to be a, a play at the school. It's Friday at seven or two on Saturday. Is that correct? And uh, and it's funny, uh, and it involves a whole bunch of people uh, that are alums and connected to the school, and they're all talented, and they've been working on it for quite some time. So look for it uh, and look look to to be a part of it. It, it sounds like fun. And I, I have an announcement uh, for, for you guys as far as my availability this week. I'm going to be in Right Start this week, which is the, uh, the process you go through to make sure you have a good uh, transition. You get ready. Uh, your incoming pastor, HR, is going to be going to Right Start. Uh, have a good start at, at the church that you're being called to. And so I'll be unavailable basically from Wednesday through Friday. Uh, if you email me, I'll respond back. It just may not be in a timely manner. Uh, it's all virtual this year, so I'm going to be staring at a screen for three days straight. So uh, uh, that part of it is, is you know, is what it is. Uh, but we do give thanks that we are able to be a part of Right Start this year. It's a, a good thing. It helped me when I was coming here, and, and I know it's going to be helpful for a lot of pastors. So I give thanks for that as well. Um, but for all these ways that God is moving and active and present in our church, we give thanks and praise God, because without God, none of this stuff would be happening. And it is good, and it is a blessing. Well, now, now is the time when we give thanks for God's many blessings. And we give thanks for the provision that is made for our church. Uh, as you came in this morning, you probably saw the plates on the tables out there. As you go out from this place, I invite you to search your heart for what God is calling you to, to contribute or bless the church with in support of her ministries. Um, but right now, and for you online, I want to invite you guys to uh, support the ministries of this church or your church. Uh, the address uh, to send is on the upper part of this video. And also the P.O. Box for Stella, if you're a member of that church, is P.O. Box 175, Stella, Missouri, 64831. And uh, 64867, I was corrected. Um, and uh, we also are on tithe.ly if you want to give to Anderson. That's a, uh, it's a, an electronic form of giving. Uh, I encourage you to support your churches and their ministries. But right now, let us give thanks for the generosity that does support these churches. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for your generosity, for your abundant grace, for how you love us each and every day without reservation and for how that love invites us to a new life, to a transformed life, to a better life with you. God, being in your presence is, there's nothing better. And knowing the love of Jesus Christ and being able to share it, being gifted to share it, is so wonderful. God, I give thanks for each expression of that love that as those gifts are made, they support not only this church, but the ministry of this church. For how this church in turn loves its neighbors and seeks new ways to love its neighbors. God bless every effort to that effect. Bless every gift to that effect and make us a fruitful church full of your love, glorifying you at all times. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now let us give thanks and praise God as we sing of His faithfulness, as we stand together and sing hymn number 140. And we're going to be singing three verses. So please stand as you are able. faithfulness O God my Father there is no shadow of 
turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. For today and bright hope for tomorrow Blessings abound, thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. Thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. You may be seated. And we do give thanks for God's great faithfulness, for his enduring love, and the provision that he makes for his people. And one of those signs of provision that our church is experiencing is Pastor HR. There's a, a need that has come up in the life of the church, an opportunity for a new beginning, for a new start. And God has called the Rogers family to be blessed to be here to serve. Now, in the Methodist Church, there's, uh, we have our traditions, potlucks usually, right? And, uh, and we have uh, a lot of things that have an outward sign of something that's going on inward. We say oftentimes that communion and baptism are outward signs of inward graces. And we, we bring that kind of approach to God calling people and people being sent to churches when we bring something like this, the baton. It's an outward sign of handing off of the gift and the responsibility of serving a church. 
And uh, one of the things that we do on a typical year is pass the baton around and pray over it during worship service. But this year we're going to be uh, giving it out to different families throughout um, the next coming nine weeks and having you guys pray over it during worship. And so uh, right now I would like to uh, invite the cables, if you would be so, uh, so good, as to silently be praying over the baton and the ministry of the Rogers family during worship. Let's begin that with, uh, a congr with a prayer together. Let us bow our heads. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for the many gifts and the graces that you have given HR. And we give thanks for the transforming power of the Holy Spirit on his life. For how you, has, you have touched his soul and blessed him to be called to to ministry, but not just to ministry, but to the ministry specifically of pastoring a church, of shepherding your people. God, it is a wonderful gift that you have called him here, and we pray that his ministry and that the life of his family here would be blessed. God, may this help our church, help him and his family, and our community to grow in your likeness. Bless his ministry with more fruit than Anderson has ever seen before. And bless this people, this congregation, these believers, as they join him in ministry. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And God's provision, I think, is, is a fit and good uh, first joy to lift up that God provides for God's people. What other joys are there to lift up this day? Well, I want to lift up Case. He's a joy for me today. Before church, did you take him out there to ring the bell? That was fun. Um, what other joys do we have to lift up this day? The joy of, of the performance this weekend. That's a joy. The joy of an anniversary. That's a joy. And the joy of good music. Yes. And uh, why well, lift up these joys? Are there concerns that we might lift up? Well, we definitely want to lift up those that are worshiping with us online. Uh, we love you. We, it's a joy that you are here with us this morning. And, and we anticipate the day when, uh, provided you're not living across the country, because I know some folks that worship with us live in Arizona. <clears throat> um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, but we, we look forward to the day when we can worship together, including the folks from Arizona, I would say. Um, and so I, I lift that up as both a joy and a concern. Uh, and then uh, we have a prayer request for uh, Megan's sister, um, that she be in all of our prayers and that God be present with her in this time. Are there any others? Well, then let us also lift up, both with joy and concern, all those that are in positions of service, our military, our police officers, our medical uh, workers, our uh, first responders, all those folks that, uh, that seek to serve and care for others. We give thanks for them, and we also pray uh, over the concern of the extra risks that they take on. And God, uh, as always, we pray over the suffering and the hurt that has been brought by the pandemic and so many other ills of the world. Let us come to God in a time of prayer.
gracious and loving God, we give thanks for you today. We give thanks for your presence. We give thanks for your word. We give thanks for being brought here because of your love, your grace, your mercy. God, we give thanks for your faithfulness when we are unfaithful, when we fall short, how you keep coming back, inviting us, loving us, caring for us, and helping us. We give thanks for your provision, for when things go wrong, and you are there. And God, we give thanks for the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how we may be a part of it for the hope that brings and for the hope that we can bring to others because of that. Hear our prayers today, God. We have some joys that we just revel in because, well, because you allow us to. And we have some concerns, God, that we need your help with. Some spoken and some unspoken, but God, we know you hear them. And we pray and we trust in the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it's my privilege to share with you a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 32 through 44. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. He knew that you, will, you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped with cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Change brings, or new life brings change, doesn't it? I think, I think Dylan can attest to that, right? I know I can. When William showed up uh, last year, it changed everything. Every day was different and continues to be different. New possibilities were opened up. Kelsey will know this. And uh, it's, it's amazing. 
what difference new life can can make and I know I know Missouri can't decide whether it's spring or not but I, I tell you when spring happens and especially if you work outside you know there's a change it's different there's a lot more work to do uh, from what I'm told once once uh, spring hits and uh, I know Kevin's been pretty busy now that it's warmed up a bit more uh, more yard work to do more stuff outside to do and with all the rain more stuff to do with regard to that new life brings change and it's the same with the new life that we receive from Christ imagine if you will from our story the devastation that would have come with losing Lazarus a brother a family member how the future would have altered because of that death the possibilities the hopes and then imagine Jesus bringing new life to Lazarus and the change that that would make every every family member every friend every friend of a friend that was impacted by his death was even more impacted by his new life resurrection has that impact on people when we come to faith in Jesus it not only changes our lives and not only the changes lives of our family and our friends around us but the people that know them it cascades in our scripture today Jesus responds to Lazarus's death and this is just before the text we read saying to Martha I am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me will live even though he dies and whoever lives and believes in me will never die this is a huge thing those that believe in Jesus will never die that death has been defeated and that Jesus brings new life that will never end it's a fundamental earth-shaking change for all of us the faith in Jesus opens doors that seem to have been sealed forever like the tomb of Lazarus when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior it brings hope to the darkest places when we see the brokenness of the world and we see it when we see people going hungry when we see people at war with each other in violence when we see oppression we know that new life by the Spirit allows us to feed the hungry to be peacemakers among our neighbors and to lift up the oppressed we know that the answer that new life is in Jesus to the ills of the world so we heartily celebrate Easter it's wonderful to know the resurrection and we give thanks as Jesus gave thanks over the miracle of resurrection this week I had it all planned out I was going to talk all about resurrection I was going to talk about how God took an ordinary man who had died and brought him to new life in the person of Lazarus by the grace of God I was going to talk about all the hope that that brings and how that's true for each and every one of us today then I spent some time studying the scripture meditating on it praying on it I invited the Holy Spirit into all of it and you know what God surprised me this week the resurrection of Lazarus is wonderful and amazing and it is a foretaste of the resurrection of Jesus Christ that happens later in the gospel story and it brings us to that hope of the resurrection that you and I each of us can have we see hopelessness turned to joy we see brokenness and death in the world defeated by the power and the love of God 
And it does bring us hope. Yet, when I was studying this, that's not where God drew my focus. Instead, God drew my focus to the moment before. The moment where we see Lazarus dead. We see his sisters upset, angry, grieving. I remember sitting with a family of someone who was about to die in the hospital many years ago. And I remember th thinking to myself, what do I say? I'm the pastor, I should know. Should I say something about God? Something about the resurrection? Should I say nothing at all? Have you guys ever found yourself in a situation like that where a group of people were grieving? I remember a few years ago, actually several years ago, I was new to being a pastor. And I got a phone call from one of the people that went to the church and I was informed that uh, she had gotten a terminal diagnosis. Now, looking back with a little more maturity, I can see that I could have handled the phone call better. Because my impulse, my inclination was to be an encourager. That's what I was good at. I wanted to make her feel better because I didn't like that she was feeling bad. So I said things like, well, you know doctors can get it wrong. I said things like, uh, there's hope in the resurrection. And there are hopes of miracles. God can work miracles. I encouraged her not to give up. And she didn't need to or want to hear any of the things I was saying. What she needed in that moment was what Jesus gave to Mary. Somebody to sit and cry with her. So often, when we are in places of brokenness in the world, the hurt that is caused by sin in the world is so apparent that it makes us uncomfortable. Uncomfortable in our own skins. We want to make some joke to lighten the situation because of our discomfort. We might want to make some excuse for why it is the way that it is. Or some rationalization to make ourselves feel more comfortable with the problem of sin. And more okay with the situation. To explain it away. This is why in a lot of tragic moments you'll hear people trying to do good but saying things like well, God has a plan, and it's all according to God's plan. Or God works in mysterious ways. Well, God does work in mysterious ways. But rarely do these words give anyone any comfort aside from the person speaking them. In fact, sometimes they cause people to become angry at God or to misunderstand who God is. Our scripture today gives us a clear example of who Jesus is in such situations. He knows that Lazarus will be raised. He does. Yet he doesn't run ahead of this. Instead, he too is disturbed by the hurt caused by the death of Lazarus. The hurt of the moment the hurt that has been wrought on himself and his friends. Death is a part of the brokenness of the world. It's a result of sin. But instead of rushing ahead to the resurrection, as I was planning to do in my sermon, Jesus stops in the moment before to sit with Mary, to cry with her, to grieve, and to be present in her grief. That sin should be led into the world and that suffering be inflicted upon God's children was not the plan. Eden was the plan. And we messed it up. But God made provision in Jesus. 
Think back to a time when you experienced true grief. Not just a mild disappointment, but grief after a loss. It might have been after a death, the loss of a job or a livelihood. I know I grieved during the pandemic because of all the things that we've lost because of that. And it could be grieving at the state of the world. There is certainly still a lot of brokenness. Have you experienced the moment before? I see so many examples of people grieving the hurt in the world that sin has caused. The death brought by sin and hate. The mistrust and division brought by our sinful nature. I see people grieving the hurt caused. Some I see getting angry, like Mary and Martha. I see some in denial. I see some depressed, not wanting to get out of bed. I see some near giving up, and I see some that just cynically accept that this is the way of the world. It's the way it's always been, and it's the way it's always going to be. This is not the case, because of course Easter comes. Christ's resurrection and the restoration of creation come. But sometimes we need to be like Jesus. We need to sit. We need to cry. We need to grieve. The pain is real, even if it is transitory, even if it is temporary. Grief can manifest in a lot of ways. There are said to be five stages of grief. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. I see each of these in the midst of the broken world. Do you? In the midst of mass shootings, riots, the pandemic. I see people grieving in all these ways. I wonder what the impact would be if instead of immediately rushing ahead to our solution, to the problems of this world, if instead we stopped for a moment before and were present with one another in grief. When we see someone angry or upset, instead of getting defensive or dismissive, what if instead we listened and we grieved with over the hurt that they experience. Going back to my earlier story about being in the hospital with the family of the person who was dying, I can tell you it didn't matter what I said. Nobody remembers now. Or what I didn't say. What matters is we were together in the grief. God's grace visits us there in that moment before. It is what answers the hurt of the world. And it's that same grace that does bring us to Easter, that brings us to that wonderful moment of Lazarus coming out of the tomb, that moment of resurrection, to the new life that brings new possibilities that goes on forever through faith in Jesus. May we who grieve be comforted by the presence of God. And may we who have faith in Jesus Christ bring comfort and new life to those that grieve. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks that you are there with us in the moment before. We give thanks for the humanity of Jesus Christ, for how he feels what we feel. And we give thanks for the vision to see that the world is not as you would have it, that it is hurt by sin and brokenness. We give thanks for that vision because it allows us to be a part of your provision as we bring the light and the hope of Jesus Christ into all places. 
We give thanks in the name of the one who saved us, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I invite you to stand together and join in singing hymn number 368, My Hope is Built. We are going to be singing the first three verses. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, He then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, All other ground is sinking sand, All other ground is sinking sand. May you know the joy and the gift of the resurrection. May you be able to bring that gift and that hope to all others. May you know that moment when the stone is rolled aside and new life is revealed. May that new life bring you to love your neighbors, to sit with them in their grief, that they too may know the day of Easter. Go now so blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>